I'm going to introduce you to our keynote speaker this evening and it is a great honour that we have Dr. Minas Kachajorian. Got it right. Um, and um, he's going to open up for us this evening and I'd like to welcome him to the podium. I think still we can say good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a true pleasure to attend the Middle East Application Symposium organized by Vincent Masons. I'm going to make a kind of uh, introduction to, I would say, the agenda of today. And then I'm going to end by some insights about uh, the landscape of uh, arbitration law and practice in Qatar. And I will give maybe some of the examples of the caseloads we have in arbitration, either domestically or internationally. The agenda looks very interesting, as today we will presented the results of the 2019 survey conducted jointly by Queen Mary University of London and Vincent Mason International Law Firm, where the key word is efficiency, in international construction disputes in particular. In fact, efficiency is a real concern for all the participants in arbitration. It's a concern for the parties, it's a concern for the arbitral institutions, it's a concern, of course, also for the legal counselors and even the third party funders. Arbitration institutions have opened the doors to improve efficiency in arbitration procedures, especially in the complex disputes. Following different surveys, which took place in the last few years all over the world, and where stakeholders exchanged their points of view and their experiences that they had during previous arbitrations. To address concerns of time and cost efficiency, most of the national and international arbitral bodies and institutions have adopted expedited resolution processes for both small and medium-sized project or medium-sized projects. So efficiency has been partially achieved, but we are so much ambitious that we are looking for more and more progress in such direction. We may say that expedited arbitration itself, especially for small uh, arbitration cases, it's a feature of efficiency. The admission of electronic exchange of communications between the parties is another feature. The early dismiss of claims without merit, as many now of the arbitration bodies and centers have inserted in their newly revised uh, regulations, is also part of the process. However, Dispute resolution community is eager to achieve more efficiency, including the practice of dispute prevention mechanism, even before going into the arbitration process, how to prevent, and I know that in the room, we have many people who are thinking and sharing the same idea. Why shall we pay that much money if we can prevent or avoid the dispute earlier? At the pre-arbitral stage, there are possibilities to progress to find out common grounds between the parties. Of course, with the help maybe of some institutions or with the help even of the legal counsels through the proceedings until, of course, rendering the final award if such amicable settlements or prevention mechanisms have not worked regularly and enough. Exploring the views of the users in construction and infrastructure projects are very significant. That's why the importance of the surveys in such cases is primordial. In the diagnosis of the critical concerns and to improve the way dispute resolution should be optimally approached. As much as construction projects can contribute to the development of a country, and we are talking about countries where we have been living and we have lived, uh, Qatar, UAE, Saudi Arabia, and many other countries, 
The same goes to the amount of disappointments when a project goes wrong and the construction is interrupted for several months or years, which means a common loss to all the participants of the project without exception. It is true that in a chain of contracts related to construction, the cascade effects from the employer to the main contractor to the subcontractors to the suppliers and so on, happening at the top level between the employer and the main contractor can have a negative impact on the subcontractors, lenders, insurers, etc. As it is common practice on construction projects to have more than one set of parallel contractual arrangements in place, and where each of these contractual arrangements is regarded as a link in the overall contractual clauses. I won't open that other big issue that when you have a chain of contracts and where one contract is inserting an arbitration clause while the other ones have a litigation clause, and all these complexity related to the parallel proceedings. Such interrelated effects have been felt in several cases in Qatar or elsewhere, and where the arbitration has lasted more than two years, although the exertion of all possible efforts to reduce time, to reduce cost, in good faith, dealing with complex arbitrations. Definitely, the presence of multiple parties, multiple claims, factual and technical complexity, large amounts claimed and counterclaimed, and evidence elements, discovery, are two factors in the long procedures of arbitration, without talking about the paranoia of the due process principle and how to respect the due process by the arbitral tribunal. However, in all cases, the arbitral tribunal plays an important role into the acceleration of the process without rush and without violation of the due process principle. We need to move our thinking away from improving what we already have or obtained and address the fundamental question of how we can most effectively deliver what the users of arbitration need. The users of arbitration, in fact, don't need just an award. They need also an enforcement system which is efficient, which is fast, although in the enforcement phase some new tactics have appeared recently in Qatar or elsewhere, and which, of course, uh, uh, I would say, put a kind of break into the activation of that process. Using technology, and that is also another key word, technology goes very well with efficiency. Using technology by creating arbitration platforms may contribute as an available option to reach efficiency and security for the amount of information exchanged notably with any sensitive information. Furthermore, third party funding, as you will hear also tonight, which is a novelty for our region. A few years ago, we started speaking about the regulation of the third, fund, uh, third uh, party funders have an increasing role to play in commercial, but also in investment arbitrations. Recently, I was participating at the uh, amendment project of the ICSIT, the International Center for the Settlement of Investment Disputes, which is part of the World Bank mechanism for the large investment disputes. They are already talking about the early disclose by either party, but most probably will be the investor but there are also some cases where even some of the third world countries may access or may resort to such third party funders in order to secure the funds, especially the costs of the legal counsels. So third party funding is a novelty for our region and we need maybe to study it well and to find out how we can manage such mechanisms with some of the public order 
principles uh, pertaining in this part of the world. It may also assist a respondent to know that an outside entity with much litigation experience has audited the case and decided to invest in it. So there is some seriousness when you find that there is already an investor coming and uh, uh, investing in such a uh, case. At the Qatari level, of course, we praise efficiency, as well as to obtain a robust, fast, and predictable result in the line of the Qatari arbitration law. Of course, everybody felt that since 2017, with the new law on arbitration number two of 2017, some improvements happened. Maybe not all what we were looking for or we are eager to, but let me give you first hint, if I may say, already at the Ministry of Justice, there is a process to review some provisions of the Qatari arbitration law. Furthermore, there is also a kind of suggestion to remove from the criminal code of Qatar that just the word arbitrator when we come to consider the arbitrators as public officers, which is not of course the case and everybody has to admit this. The UAE had a previous, I would say, experience in this domain. They have removed that word and we are in the way. It's a question of time. I cannot pretend when will happen, but this is going to happen too. Uh, all the, I would say, the gentle critics uh, which have been uh, addressed by the law firms about uh, the wording of some of the uh, unclear arbitration provisions or things like uh, uh, which are violating the confidentiality of the process. For example, why should the arbitrators at the end of their work submit an electronic copy to the Ministry of Justice? Is this only to prepare a kind of statistics every year or it goes beyond that? That also is going to change soon. So there is always some novelty in Qatar and uh, we try of course to monitor all these novelties by uh, writing articles, by translating some of the judgments and so on. So predictability to seek and obtain enforceable awards exempted from any grounds on, of nullity it's a general, I would say, target of any person who has been into a uh, arbitration in Qatar or in the GCC in general. The Qatari courts, and here it's another important uh, point, have been several times tested in 2018 and 2019. Maybe not very much in 2017 because the law was still new and there wasn't enough cases to be brought to the courts. And when I talk about the Qatari courts, now we are not talking anymore about the courts which are of first instance, but we are talking about the court of appeal and of course the court of cassation or the Supreme Court. So already the court of appeal in Qatar made very clear in several uh, awards, that, uh, sorry, in several judgments that uh, any uh, arbitration conducted under a foreign arbitral institution. I will give an example, ICC, LCIA, uh, SIAC, SCC, and so on. They are not under any obligation to render the award in the name of His Highness the Emir. I wrote already a very strong article in the very beginning in 2012 when these things have happened for the first time, and I think now there is this kind of uh, I will say uh, permission, okay, to the uh, uh, arbitrators to don't put uh, systematically the name of the emir or to render it, especially that the law is silent about this uh, uh, particular condition. Any defense that the council has about the arbitration validity, the arbitration clause validity, formal validity, or substantial validity should be raised before the judge in case that there is a parallel, I would say, uh, procedure before the courts at the very first opportunity. The, the courts, the Qatari courts, have been very much uh, listening and applying this to the letter by saying that 
whenever you have an arbitration clause which is valid even prima facie, please, without submitting any statement of defense, without even submitting any kind of memorandum, just present on half a page a small paragraph saying, uh, Your Honor, we consider that this case should not be heard by the courts because there is an arbitration uh, clause. Something else which is more practical, I would say, and that you uh, have been practicing this maybe uh, in several of your cases. Few parties who have been creditors of awards, it means that they got an award in their favor, succeeded to obtain enforcement through the courts of financial assets which were retained by a debtor of that debtor of the arbitration. In other words, suppose you have a contractor, you are the subcontractor, you won your claim, and now you want to enforce it, you can go to the employer and ask him to retain that money and even to pay you by kind of indirect action, which makes you get like a bridge between you as the subcontractor and the employer. There are still some improvements to do on the abusive call of performance bonds. We know all of us that this is a big headache and we are trying to find out a way how even for a short term the uh, judge of urgent matters, the summary judge as we call him also in some jurisdictions, can help in order that at least to study if this call has been an abusive call or just an unconditional letter or performance bond, which makes that the whole system goes into a kind of unbalanced state. Another issue which is important to underline is the unincorporated joint ventures. There have been many joint ventures, I would say in the last years, constituted either between Qatari companies, I mean 100% all Qataris, or between Qataris and uh, foreigners, I even saw up to four companies which go into a joint venture. There is not a clear indication, even in the joint venture, informal agreement, who is who, who is doing what, how the uh, responsibilities are distributed, and this is creating, of course, when we come to the stage of arbitration, a big issue. Should we go uh, 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 in arbitration against each one of these joint venture members plus the unincorporated joint ventures? Should we only go against the unincorporated joint venture and leave the others one? Should we go and find out who has more money in order that we try to enforce it at the end against him? All these are, of course, strategies that you built while you are studying this. <coughs> I want to finish with two other uh, pieces of news, if I may say. Uh, I'm sure that many of you have heard and this is going to come into reality in the coming few, I would say, weeks, months. There will be a new court called the Court for Investment and Trade, which is going to be established in Qatar. And where they are studying that maybe even pleading can be conducted either in Arabic or in English. So it will be a kind of improvement and this has been done by, I would say, some direct instructions of His Highness the Emir, and there is already a draft, a law which is prepared in order to establish uh, the uh, such court. Such court, I believe, okay, I don't have yet the draft of the law, but I believe it will be in charge of reviewing and enforcing the arbitral awards later on instead of the normal court of appeal as is the case now. Finally, Qatar and its arbitration community present in this room should draw practical lessons from the survey which will be, I will say, disclosed uh, today and assess the impact of the old trends, sorry, of the new trends, not the old trends, but the old trends in comparison with the new trends and analyze the, the dynamism of the ever-evolving world of arbitration.
Thank you, Vincent Masons, for organizing this lovely event, and thank you for listening. Thank you very much.